This is running now. 
for somebody who is smoking 15 cigarettes a day. That is the pattern of lifespan reduction that's happening across, across our world because of this. Our world is desperate to get out. In mind, in body, in spirit. So what does the Bible say about wellness? Is it, is it something separate? Is it something that is actually in the scriptures? Um, that's what we're going to talk about today, is what the Bible actually says about wellness. Um, we all know that there is a mind, body, and even spirit connection. Um, you know it because when something is bothering you, where do you feel it? In your gut, in your heart, right? Like it's, it's, a, it's crazy, like our body lets us know. Um, some of us have autoimmune disorders. Literally your body is telling you when you're stressed and, and it, it affects your body. We get sick sometimes when we're feeling something heavy emotionally. Um, well, the Bible actually addresses this. And in the book of Proverbs, there are so many cool scriptures that really show this kind of mind, body, spirit connection. I'm just going to reference these for now. Um, in Proverbs 14, verse 30, it says that a heart at peace gives life to the body, but envy rots the bones. Ooh, that's a deep one. Gracious words are a honeycomb, sweet to the soul and healing to the bones. And she just sometimes even feel it in physically when someone has expressed gracious words to you. It's like a weight lifts off your shoulders and you, you feel it in your body. Um, Proverbs 3, uh, through chapter 4, all of those chapters, they really show the connection between wisdom and wellness. And in uh, verse 22 of chapter 4, it says that uh, wisdom is life to those who find it and health to one's whole body. Um, don't, you know, don't be mistaken, there isn't a prom there's, there's not a promise that there won't be physical hardship. We are human, we all know that there are frailty in our bodies. But there is an amazing um, ability to bring wellness in a whole sense when we are looking to the scriptures for our guidance. Um, the, the scripture, or the, the word that's used for wellness in the scriptures is one that is still in a, a, Jew, a frequent Jewish greeting, and it's one that you might be very familiar with. It is shalom. And what is the word you typically associate with shalom? Peace, right? And it's kind of where we get in our modern day churches, some of them say, peace be with you and also with you, because that is the Jewish greeting of shalom. Somebody's kind of checking in, how are you? How is your peace? And they, and they say back to you, shalom. Like, and that you're checking with each other on each other's peace. Um, but actually, so I'm just grabbing this little book. Um, this is okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, so, Shalom is, it is peace, but it's a little deeper than that. It's whole of life wellness. It is taking what is broken and move my peace. Okay. Just a beautiful stone wall 
made up of many pieces. Um, life is complex, isn't it? And if any one of these pieces is misaligned or is missing, it disrupts our, our whole show. Um, another, another illustration in the scriptures um, is when kingdoms, when rival kingdoms were fighting one another. Their shalom was disrupted, but shalom was not restored until, it wasn't just when they stopped fighting, it was when they actually started working to each other's benefits. And that is how you knew that there was true shalom. Um, I think about it, if any of you have kids, I'm just gonna, you know, you know what I mean. There's, there's no shalom in the house, right, when kids are fighting. Like, it is the thing that just irks me the most, is when my kids are fighting. <clears throat> and, but, oh, the beauty, even if it is for two minutes of the day. When they are working for each other and, like, doing something together and enjoying it, like, it is the most beautiful, wonderful thing. And you just, you just want to celebrate it. That is, that is shalom, things that have been broken that are coming back together and working for each other's benefit. Um, so we all know the world is on this quest for wellness, right? We're all putting so much money into it. We're all trying to figure out our own wellness. But how does our quest for wellness compare to this biblical idea of shalom? Um, I love the images in... Um, in the Jewish historical uh, lifestyle because that idea of the stone wall, it's, it's a bunch of individual unique pieces coming together, right? This isn't just a uniform one wall. This is a bunch of different individuals coming together. And they're coming together to thrive. That's our theme today, together we thrive, right? And I love that because it's not uniformity, it's unity. And one part I do think about wellness in America and just the Western view on it is that we have often taken the we out of wellness. Wellness can be a very individualistic pursuit. Um, it can be what do I need to do for my own physical, my own mental, my own spiritual. And you know, we even, it's even in the name, right? We call it self-care. That's what wellness sort of is in America. And don't get me wrong, that's, that's an absolute, such an important part of it. Because when you think about that stone wall, you have to be able to come as your piece to bring to that wall. And if your piece is broken down, it's hard to offer that, isn't it? Um, but the biblical shalom and wellness is so much bigger than just ourselves. It's so much of more about how we come together with God and with one another. There are so many amazing resources out there about self-awareness, isn't there? I mean, you can find out anything you want to figure out about yourself out there. There's a uh, personality type for it. Thank you. Um, and I think I need to I'm sorry guys. <laughs> I'm coming to terms with it. I'm you know. All right. Thank you, thank you. That's awesome. Um so um I completely forgot what I was talking about. <laughs> okay, yeah, Enneagrams. Okay. So you can find out like absolutely anything you want to find out about yourself, can't you? And don't get me wrong, like, I am the first to sign up. If there's any sort of personality test, like, I love that stuff. I will, I will talk about it all day long. Actually, funny story, how I first started talking to my husband, John, is we were on a plane trip to India, and I was, like, had just finished all these psychology classes, and I was like, hey, can you draw me a picture of your family? <laughs> so... That's how a poor guy started a relationship with me. <laughs> Having me analyze him and all that. Um, but you know, I think also there's so many great resources out there about 
identifying problems in relationships, right? You can, I mean, I feel like flooded all the time on social media and books is how to identify toxic relationships, set up boundaries, um, you know, when to say goodbye to things, removing ourselves, like, and please don't mishear what I'm saying. There is absolutely a place for that. And as a, I would say, kind of a codependent type in recovery myself, there is, there is, a, there is a place for all of that. Um, but what I, what I don't think our society is great at is teaching us actually how to restore broken relationships. We're, we're great at identifying what's wrong and letting get away from it. But learning how to actually bring back that biblical shalom in our families and even in our churches, we're not, we're not great at it. Um, and honestly, we all haven't been great at it, especially the, the pandemic kind of highlighted it. But, but it's, that's so much harder. Um, yeah, when I look at the biblical view of shalom, it is, it's so much more about not just me, myself, and I, but, but the we and wellness. Um, the wholeness of self, also in relation to other people and with God. You know, if you look at the word wellness, if we trade out the we and we only define it with the I, what word are we stuck with? Sometimes we're still stuck with illness. We can analyze ourselves forever. And if we don't actually deal with the hard things that are causing us distress in our relationships, we might stay stuck in that cycle. I've been there before, for a long time, for years. Um, so, yes, we need to take all of those great, great, great resources that are coming at us. But to truly have that biblical shalom that lifts those weight off our shoulders, that brings that joy to our heart, healing to our bones, we have to learn how to deal with relationships, and we need God's help to do that. Um, Ephesians 4, if you have a Bible or a phone, you can flip to that. Ephesians 4, verse 15 is our theme scripture today. How are we doing out there? Some of you thought you were just coming to pickleball and, you know, dancing. <laughs> Getting a little deep here. I know. Um, so Ephesians 4, verse 15 to 16. This passage talks about shalom in the body of Christ, um, peace in the churches. And it talks about being able to get away from being tossed around by every wind and wave of teaching and even just the deceitful scheming that can happen. And in verse 15, it tells us how we can find that. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who is the head, that is Christ. From him the whole body, joined and held together by every supporting ligament, grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. Isn't that a beautiful picture? I think so much about that stone wall there, you know, that each piece is together and supporting. But also, it's, it's like, it's this body. You think of your unique body and how many tiny little ligaments are so important. And you don't even notice them until they're torn or pulled. But, but every part working together becomes that mature body. Um, I love how it discusses here that Relationships that are marked by both street speaking the truth, but in love. We, we need that so much in our life to be able to have families and friendships and churches that we can truly speak truth to each other, but in love. Um, and that we can work together and support each other. This, this event took so many hands to put in. Like, thank you, everyone, everyone made this event possible. Because if you were here setting up, or you're running a station, or you got your kids somewhere so you could get here, like, you, you 
works to make this happen. And, and it's so encouraging. So we see this beautiful picture of like what it looks like to thrive together. But that's sort of like the happy ending. You have to rewind back a little bit in the chapter to see how we actually get there, okay? So in chapter four, rewind back in verse two. I'm just going to say, I don't think this is going to be a best-selling title in America for wellness, okay? I just have a feeling. Be completely humble and gentle. All right. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. This is how we are going to have shalom. This is how we're going to have the kind of relationships that can be totally unique. People that see things very differently from each other fit together under the unity under Christ. It is hard work, but it is worth it. It is so worth it. Um, and as we wrap up today, I'd like us just to think about how is our shalom? How is it personally for you right now? Is your, do you personally have anything that you feel like is, is just out of alignment right now that's causing everything else to kind of rock and shake? Is there a relationship in your life that maybe popped in your mind and you're like, oh, I'm not going to think about that one right now? <laughs> that's usually how I know that's the one that I need to go towards and pray, pray for, pray about. If there's anything that comes to your mind today that is missing from that shalom, that whole of life wellness, think about one step that you can take towards that sense of peace within God, with, with you and God, within yourself, and with other people. And if you're here today and you're like, that sounds great, but I have no idea where to start with that, that's okay. We've all been there and probably we're all there with you today. But there are so many people that are craving that kind of fellowship even right here. So today I want to encourage you, soak up the fun, but also find somebody today, maybe from this event, that could walk alongside you and help support you. We need, we need each other. As Hazel mentioned in the welcome, women especially, we're just we're wired for that connection, and we need each other to help us do that. Um, so I hope you guys have an amazing time today. I'm really looking forward to everything we're going to be doing. I'm going to give a little bit of an orientation now what's happening. If you have not signed a waiver, um, we're asking that all you really need to make sure you do is put your signature on there. Um, you are saying you are allowing yourself to participate in these physical activities. And I already prayed that no one will get hurt today. <laughs> Please join me in that prayer. But we're going to be having options of activities now. So um, the way that this is going to go, you see on your program, if you get lost of what's happening, we're going to have a um, brief fellowship break coming up to get you to your first activity. Fellowship break is a great time. You find out where you're going, and if you want to stop in, we have in the multi-purpose room over here with all the pink tables. There is some healthy snacks that some ladies have set up for us. So stop in, grab a snack, and then get to your first activity. We are going to have two rotations of activities, and we have four activities to choose from. Okay? So if you get to an activity and there's like 20 people there, and you're like, oh man, you can come back for the second round. Okay? So our activities we're going to be choosing from, um, I'm going to have whoever's doing the station to stand up. So the first station we're going to have is Rebound and Trampoline. And Ms. Paula is going to be leading us in that. And she can tell you all about it. She's got all the facts of like how amazing it is for your health. It's so much fun. So that will be in the dance room, which is also this direction. Okay. So, so Rebound and Trampoline. Right, right next to Rebound and Trampoline is, is going to be our art and journaling station, led by Ms. Shade. And um, Shade is going to be leading everyone through a, a mindful prompt 
Um, and she's going to be doing a little bit of sharing. We're, there are canvases in there. There is paint. There is our coloring sheets, journaling sheets. Just have at it with your creativity. It's going to be amazing. Um, next up, right here, <coughs> we are going to have Michelle leading us in some dance aerobics. Um, so we will be clearing the chairs, and this area on the front of the divider will be the dance session. And to behind the divider, you might have noticed some pickleball nets. And Miss Connie right here is going to be teaching us and having us try out pickleball. So have so much fun. Um, she can have a total of eight there, unless people want to kind of trade in. And, um, and I think that that's the only one that has a definite limit. So um, after our first session, we're going to be kind of going around, letting you know when it's time to switch. We'll have another break. We can go get another snack or some water, and we'll switch to your next activity. We will be coming back all together back here at 12.30 to a few closing announcements. And um, when you stop in the food area, you'll see some really pretty little, um, what are they called? Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> plants, succulents. I was like, what are they called? Little succulent plants that we're going to be doing some giveaways. Um, the first to be picked from the drawing is if you signed up for the email, the newsletter. So um, sign your email up on that in the front table if you'd like to win a drawing. There will be others that I've chosen as well. Um, with that, I am, any, are there any questions? Any questions for the questions? There are restrooms out front, and also there's one over here as well. Um, so with that, I am going to send you off. Go have so much fun. We're going to have 25 minutes in each um, activity that we're doing. Great time. <laughs>
Oh, okay. You ready? You can keep it off. I just was... Let me know when you're ready. Let's watch this, watch this stuff. Set him on the arm. I like 